through a jungle of nonsense. <clears throat> you might have noticed the title. Uh, I want to refer to the Hebrew script and some of the things that it went through, and I'm going to do this rapidly. I don't want to take a lot of time to do it because I want to refer you to an author named Margaret St. Peter, and she's got these books available and you'll be able to see real Hebrew. Actually, its word is Eberth, the, the language and script of Eber, the man in the scriptures. Anyway, there's uh, book one. This is one you can pick up. And it's got the Hebrew, Paleo-Hebrew letters, the ancient ones. Not that nonsense mixed thing with, that's going around the internet uh, that's pretending to be Hebrew, but it's actually a mixture of hieroglyphics. And this is book two, and this is the Paleo Grammar, and this is by Margaret St. Peter. You can get these, and go to her author's page, she's got other books, but this is real Hebrew. It's not this stuff that you're seeing being taught all over the world on the uh, internet. And uh, when you find this out, and when the Hebrew teachers are confronted with this from their students, because they're not going to watch this, <clears throat> their students are going to go, hey, what are you doing here? Didn't you look back into the origin of what you're teaching us? The, uh, the, I'm not trying to get people in trouble, but this is more truth, and you have to, you know, reveal truth. I picked up this thing called the uh, Interlinear Hebrew-English Kohlenberger, four volumes in one, a long, long time ago. And I've been reading this uh, to verify things from the Hebrew to the English for a long, long time. And you'll see the side, well, it's, it's line over line. It's got the strongest concordance numbers in it. But you can see that the text that you normally see called modern Hebrew, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you what it really is. <clears throat> in the 10th century, Around 9, 10 BCE, the, uh, the script that was adopted by the Assyrians to replace the cuneiform, which was an alphabet too, but it looked like a bunch of nails or tacks or something, you know, in different arrangements, sort of like Braille, you know, no, not really like Braille. It's, it's really, uh, you know, confusing. But <clears throat> these Assyrians adopted this as their new script and it, it, it went on into the Babylonian Empire in about 800 BCE. This is way before the Babylonian captivity of Yehuda or Judah, you know, the, the Jews. They're, they're really the Yahudim. And um, when the Assyrians adopted this script, it was called the uh, Aramaic script because Aram is the key component of it. It's a man's name. <clears throat> so it's actually not Hebrew. It never was Hebrew. They just call it modern Hebrew. Well, the ancient Assyrian script. Now, these are the enemies of Yisrael, the ones that were hammering at the northern colonies for decades and decades until they finally got carried away by the Assyrians. And they were very cruel people. Now, this is before the Babylonian Empire. And then the Babylonian Empire comes along, adopts the same script. And then, well, uh, according to Yirmiyahu and Daniel, and <clears throat> the 70 years of captivity that was prophesied for the southern tribes, Yehuda, the script that they adopted, they brought it back with them. They brought the script of their captors back to them. And now we've, you know, we're calling it modern Hebrew. It's a misnomer. It's 
what it is, it's a, it's a Trojan horse. It has, it was like let in the gates, and then the Trojan horse took over the city. You know, I mean, the mind. You know, <clears throat> so people are being misguided even more. And then in the eighth century CE or AD, as they call it, we are introduced to a new factor. Little twiddly diddles called Nikud marks. Everybody's going. I know how to say it. I got the vowels now. They they think that the Hebrew alphabet is just consonants. Well, watch another video of mine that's called "How Hebrew Changed," and it basically goes from the captivity through the King James version and how it was modified, you know. <clears throat> I'll get the link and I'll put it in the description of this video. So you can go to that video and get a lot more details, a lot of pictorial examples. And it's going to change the way people talk about Hebrew and what is real. But as far as that uh, other thing that's going around the internet, like, you know, it's like a wildfire. It's uh, basically hieroglyphics. It's got a, uh, it's got a, a, a little man with his hands up, like it looks like a little script. Uh, picked, they call it pictorial Hebrew, pictorial Hebrew, or pictographic Hebrew. Well, Hebrew is pictographic. The original is not Aramaic. That's not pictographic. So watch for that. And uh, let's see, is there anything else I need to tell you? Well, the main thing I want to do is I want to get your attention and have you research this first and find out what I'm saying is true. I'm not going to lie to you intentionally, but if I'm misguided, you need to leave a comment and let me know. And if you find the truth, it's because you are seeking Yahuwah and you're obeying his word. You'll find it because you abided in his word and his word is being written in a foreign alphabet that was actually the enemy of Yisrael. But uh, not to condemn them, it's not an evil script. It's just the, the script of our captors. Thanks for watching this, and we'll see you in the next exciting video. Bye.